Hello everyone, and welcome to my second video on BeagleBone Black Barebone, where we're programming the BeagleBone Black without an operating system using TI's Starterware and Code Composer Studio and a JTAG interface. If you haven't seen my first video on getting started with Starterware and Code Composer Studio, you might want to try to uh, do that now uh, before you uh, go, f go into this video because there's a lot of important information there that uh, you'll need to uh, proceed with this. So just a little general information, uh, the TI Citara uh, AM3358, which is on the BeagleBone Black, uh, has uh, four general purpose I.O. modules. And I guess, first of all, GPIO stands for General Purpose Input-Output. And, uh, and there are four modules. They are GPIO0, GPIO1, GPIO2, and GPIO3. Uh, each one of those modules has 32 channels, and so there's a total of 128 channels on the chip, uh, but not all of those are brought out and made available to you on the BeagleBone Black. We really have to look at the schematic to see which ones are available to us. And speaking of the schematic, uh, here is a clip out of the schematic, and you can uh, in our first video, we blinked an LED that's built into the board, uh, a user 2 LED, which is connected to GPIO 1, uh, pin 23. In this video, I want to actually measure that signal with an oscilloscope. Uh, so I'm go I need to use one of the GPIO that's brought out onto the headers. Uh, and the one I picked is going to be GPIO 1, pin 28. And uh, this 11 here means that we can go to page 11 to see where this, uh, where this goes in the schematic. And I've done that here, uh, and you can see that GPIO 1, 28, is connected to pin 12 of the P9 header. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, and what I have done, is I have placed a 1000 ohm resistor between pin 12 and ground, and, uh, and then I've put my oscilloscope across that resistor. Now the reason for the resistor is the limit current. Uh, we're expecting 3.3 volts out of this, uh, and so it, with a 1000 ohm resistor, uh, that should limit current to 3.3 milliamps. Uh, so that, that should do, do this just, uh, for just fine. And you can see here, just in the picture, I have the skills, oscilloscope probe attached to actually pin 12. And so that will be my high side, and then I have the reference uh, attached to the ground side. So pin 12, pin 2, and 1000 ohm resistor on the P9 header. Okay, here we are in Code Composer Studio, and before I get into the source code, I need to show you that this, uh, this code is copyright by Texas Instruments, and uh, they, they authorize redistribution of the source code as long as the copyright is included. Uh, and uh, that we make it clear that the Texas Instruments does not endorse this video at all and there is no warranty uh, provided for using this code so you're on your own if you decide to use this. Okay, now that's out of the way. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the same example uh, program that we imported into our project in the first video uh, except I've made uh, cha changes to three lines of code. Uh, you can see up here where I ha where this uh, this constant is defined, GPIO instance pin number. I've changed it from 23 to 28 because we are changing from uh, pin uh, 23 to pin 28. So it's that simple. Uh, the other lines of code uh, that I have changed, uh, actually, all I did was get rid of them. I put comments in front of my delays. Okay. Everything else is the same as the example project. I'm just taking out the delay, and I'm, the reason I'm doing that is I want to measure how fast uh, this uh, starter wear out of the box uh, on this on this uh, uh, on the BeagleBone Black. Just how fast can this cycle through? And we're going to measure that with the oscilloscope. Um, one other thing I just want to note here. Um, Something that if you're not familiar with this environment, uh, something that's useful, uh, notice that we are using GPIO 1. Uh, if we wanted to use GPIO 2, for example, we would need to change this right here. And I'll show you what this actually means. If you highlight this and right click and then hit open 
declaration, it'll show you where this is defined. And all this is, is it's a constant that is defining the base address for the GPIO memory mapped registers. So that is the memory address for GPIO 1 registers. If we wanted to change to use a GPIO 2 pin, for example, we would need to stick this on that in that first define in our in our uh, in our uh, GPIO LED blink program. Uh, or you know, we could use this address directly, but it makes more sense and it's easier to read if we uh, if we use this. So again, if you wanted to use something other than GPIO one uh, controller, then you, you then you would need to change uh, this this sec part this part of this code right here. All right, but we are still using GPIO one in this example, and uh, so we don't need to change it. We're just changing the pin number. Okay, uh, that's all there is to it, and I have already uh, built and, and loaded this, but um, I'll just go ahead and show you that it, it still programs. It's, uh, I showed you in the first video how to connect to the uh, how to connect to the uh, Bigabone Black and how to program it and everything. So uh, I won't go too much into to that. Uh, we could go down here and look through our registers, but uh, Let's just go to the oscilloscope and see what it looks like there. Okay, so here we have the signal coming out of the BeagleBone Black. Uh, you can see that I have my voltage uh, division set to one volt uh, per division. And we see we have one, two, three, and a third. So 3.3 volts is, is uh, what we're seeing there, just as expected. Uh, the time scale is set to one microsecond per division. Uh, and I'm using the cursors here to measure the period of the signal uh, and it comes up with uh, 4.12 microseconds and uh, so with the frequency of 242.7 kilohertz now that's not quite as fast as what we might expect uh, with the this uh, this processor but uh, let's go look up in the documentation to see if we can figure out uh, what we might be able to do about that or or uh, what this is all about. Okay, here we are in the uh, reference manual for the Texas Instrument AM335X Citara. And uh, here uh, I'm in the, uh, well, it's, let's see, it's chapter 8, page 1140 is where I'm starting off. And, and you can see that GPIO1 right here. Uh, uses the L4 underscore PER underscore CLK clock. And uh, if we scroll up here, um, we can, well, it gives it here, it gives a couple different options for that clock right here for how fast it runs. Uh, this is 100 megahertz, 50 megahertz. Uh, and if we go up here and we, you can kind of see it a little, little better, I, I always like the picture. Um, here the L L4 PR under, underscore CLK clock. So that's that's the clock that the GPIO module is using. Uh, it's there's a divide by two there, and that's attached to core underscore clock out M4, which is 200 megahertz. So going into the clock that is uh, going into the GPIO module is a 100 megahertz clock, and uh, so. I'm not sure if we'll really be able to speed up what's what we're seeing there on the oscilloscope. Um, I haven't dug into it uh, a great deal. Uh, this reference manual is almost 5,000 pages. Uh, but if anybody else uh, uh, has uh, has run into this and has been able to uh, make it run any faster, please let me know. Of course, uh, uh, what we're seeing there is is uh, is pretty fast, and uh, it might just do do just fine. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, please subscribe, leave a comment, especially if you've uh, got some input on how to uh, how to speed things up there. Um, and uh, and we'll talk again real soon.